When it comes to moving around in a virtual world, the most common two methods are traditional stick movement or teleportation. But some developers have been experimenting with different methods. Here are eight of the most creative. Let's start with swinging. There are actually a lot of different VR games that let you swing through the world, but one of the first, and my personal favourite, is Windlands. You fire hooks that attach onto anything green in the level. This is not for the weak of stomach, and it's pretty difficult to get the hang of at first, but once you do, chaining together a bunch of swings feels fantastic. Windlands 2 went with a more action-oriented feel. The green bushes are much more frequent, so it requires less skill to make your way around, but you get a bow and arrow this time. You've got some pretty epic boss fights, and you can play through the entire game up to 4 player co-op. If you want to try swinging around in VR for free, then there's actually a surprisingly good Spider-Man experience that was tied with the release of Spider-Man Homecoming Ruby. It doesn't look great, but it's still lots of fun swinging through a city environment, and I found it quite easy to get the hang of. Other games which involve swinging are Tarzan VR, Jet Island, and Jupiter Grad. So you can swing around, but what about flying around? There are a few options, with the first game to let you fly around was Rich's Plank Experience, which was released back in 2016. It's well known for being able to use a real world plank and have newbies walk off the edge of a skyscraper, but it also has a mode that lets you fly around the city putting out fires. You have rockets that are attached to your hands, and you steer with your hands so you can fly straight up by pointing your hands upwards. It works really well, and it's incredibly cool flying around the city. Megaton Rainfall released at the end of 2017 with VR support on PSVR, and VR support came later to the PC version. This game basically turns you into a superhero, you can fly around the world defending Earth against an alien invasion, and later in the game you catch a fly into space. You can visit different stars and planets in the galaxy. It's an incredible technical achievement, especially for a single developer for the most part. You can play through the game with a gamepad, which personally I didn't like, or you can use motion controllers. Another game that lets you fly around is Airborne, which released on PC recently. This works like Superman with you putting your hands out in front of you and then you pull the triggers. You can fly with one hand or use two which makes you fly faster. You steer with your hands just like Rich's plank experience, but it's much more responsive. You can spawn a gun by holding the grip button on either hand, so as you fly around you need to use one hand to fly and the other to shoot. It works really well, the only problem is that the game that's built around it is quite simplistic with you just flying around these big open spaces killing enemies. There's also Rush VR, which lets you jump off a mountain and fly down in a wingsuit. But the best flying VR game though, is Iron Man VR, which as the name suggests, puts you in the shoes, or should that be suit, of Tony Stark. It allows you to fly around using the move controllers, and this works the opposite of Superman, so your thrusters actually come out of the palm of your hands. To fly forwards you have to put your hands down your sides, palms facing backwards, and then you can steer by rotating your wrists. You also use your hands to fire, so you have to pull your hands up to fire which stops you flying. You have to use one hand sometimes to fly and steer, and the other one to shoot. You can also do a power punch move, which shoots you forward to take out enemies that are in close range. Iron Man VR is a fantastic game with a full length single player campaign. We can swing and we can fly, but what about floating around in zero gravity? There are a few games that see you in zero gravity environments, Adrift was the first released in the early days in 2016. This was before PSVR and motion controls were a thing with the Rift, so it controls with the gamepad. It looks great, but it's really slow paced and you really have to have an iron stomach. Detached released in 2017, which does use motion controls to steer your spacesuit. There are different modes, but the best is simulator mode if you can handle it. You have to use thrusters in short bursts to move through the environment, avoiding obstacles and activating panels. Downward Spiral Horror Station sees you going through a space station, initially you're using your hands to grab the environment and push yourself around. You quickly get a grappling gun which lets you pull yourself around, and then later a gun that lets you propel yourself forward. This is a real underrated hidden gem in my opinion, it's got two player co-op and some good satisfying combat. The best zero gravity game though is Lone Echo, which allows you to grab the environment to push yourself around, and then steer with some wrist thrusters. This is still one of my favourite ways to move in virtual reality, it's incredibly immersive and it doesn't make people feel sick. Once you get the hang of it you can move around with real precision and it all feels second nature. When it comes to swimming in VR, there is really only one game that has done it right, Freediver Triton Down. This is a short 45 minute experience that has you escaping a sinking ship. 
Similar to Lone Echo, you can grab the environment and push yourself off, but you get resistance due to being underwater. You can also do the breaststroke to swim through the water. There are sections where you have to pull yourself along walls to avoid strong currents. When you add this together with the requirement to keep your oxygen levels up, either by swimming to the surface or using oxygen masks, it really is a unique and unforgettable experience I recommend to everyone and hope to see this in more games in the future. Maybe sections where you have to swim and sections where you're walking around as normal. From swimming underwater to paddling on top of it, a recent VR game with interest in movement is Phantom Covert Ops. It's an Oculus exclusive stealth game where you make your way through an enemy base in a tactical kayak. You alternate your paddle strokes left and right to move forward, keep paddling on the left to stay right, and paddle on your right to stay left. You can paddle backwards, make sharp turns, and even lean left or right helps you steer. It's really well done, but I would have preferred it if there were sections where you got out of the kayak, maybe to open some gates or start some generators, and then you get back in the kayak to proceed through the game. Some of the most immersive games in VR are cockpit based games like Project Cars 2 or Elite Dangerous, especially if you've got a steering wheel or a flight stick. But some cockpit games make full use of motion controllers. Vox Machina, VTOL and No Man's Sky allow you to use your hands to reach out and grab your virtual joystick to steer or fly your vehicle. You can reach out using your hands to flip switches with VTOL and be in a full on simulator where you have to learn all the many controls just to start the engines and take off. Fox Machine is more simplified, but still has you controlling your mech with your hands including steering, throttle, jumping and even ejecting when all is lost. One way to move on foot is through swinging your arms backwards and forwards. There are a few games that have this option, like Hot Dogs, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, and there's an app called Natural Locomotion which allows this movement in lots of games that don't officially support it. The first game to build their entire game around this was Sprint Vector. This is a racing game where you have to sprint through levels as fast as you can. To move you have to swing your arms and then you can jump by pulling both arms down together. You can drift round corners, climb at certain points on the level and even fly for short periods. It's fast paced fun that doesn't seem to make people feel sick. Another game that released recently is Stride, a Mirror's Edge inspired parkour game where you swing your arms to sprint. You can also jump, slide and even wall run. I covered this game in more detail in a separate video, so if you want more information, then check that out. Lastly, I want to highlight climbing. A few games have climbing as part of the game, with Stormland or Population 1 allowing you to climb anything in the world. But my favourite VR game that has climbing as the only way to move is The Climb, an Oculus exclusive game made by Crytek. This game is absolutely stunning with still some of the best visuals even today. I found myself stopping to admire the view on a regular basis and it has some really cool moments like guys in wingsuits flying by or an erupting volcano. The gameplay starts off simple, with you grabbing rocks on a mountain to pull yourself up, but it doesn't take long before you have to fling yourself across gaps and quickly move across crumbling paths. It's a fun game that looks great with high levels of polish and detail from a AAA developer. And that's the end of the video. Thank you if you made it this far. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing or don't. The choice is yours.